Let me uh, end this particular session with uh, Dr. Pirapol Sutiwisesak. Okay, uh, thighs always have multi-syllables in their name. Um, he is the Deputy Secretary General of the NHSO, the National Health Security Office in Thailand. It is an independent public organization which operates the uh, universal coverage scheme for about 48 million people, or actually 75% of the total Thai population. So, doctor. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm really pleased to be here to present Thailand experience. Thailand has just become an upper middle income country with low level of poverty, moderate income inequity, and fair health status. We have achieved universal health coverage since 2001, with only 6% of our GDP spent on health, and 14% of national budget for health. The out-of-pocket health expense reduced from more than 35% in early 1980s to less than 40% after the USC. This axis shows 40 years from 1970 to 2010. This actually shows GDP per capita in dollars. So this slide shows GDP per capita during 40 years. This is Asian financial crisis. This shows percent of population coverage. Achieving USC in Thailand is a long march starting since almost 40 years ago. We spent 20 years 26 years from 1975 to 2001 to achieve full USC. In 1975, Thailand started with cover the poor with free health services when the GDP per capita was only $390. In 1980, we covered civil servants. Then in 1983, we moved to cover the near poor when the GDP per capita was 760 with the rapid economic growth, we move further to cover the regular employees with social, sell, with social, social sell, security health insurance. In 1992, the decision to cover children and the elderly in 1995 to 6 had moved the coverage up to 71 percent. The USA had become one of the main issues for political campaign in the year 2000 general election and the new government, the same ruling party as the current government, decided to move from 71% to 100% coverage in the year 2002. At that time, our GDP per capita was only $1,900, five years after the Asian financial crisis. From the flicker, we can see that economic crisis may be the best opportunity to move further on USC, as it is a time that everyone realizes the importance of USC, and also can accept all measures to reduce the cost of essential health services to support USC. In principle, every Thai citizen must, have, must be the beneficiaries, one of the three main health insurance in Thailand. But the survey last year found the population coverage was 99%. The coverage of UC scheme is about 75%. Why the, C, the civil servant scheme cover about 8%, and the SS scheme cover 16%. But my presentation today will focus on six key issues. One, ensure health care for all and poverty reduction. 
Two, the development of benefit package. Three, the transparency and participatory mechanism. Four, the strategic purchasing under fiscal constraint. Five, the preliminary assistance for damage or injury caused by any service. Six, the 24-hour service for sorry, 24-hour service of the call center. The first issue is that UHC is access to quality, comprehensive, essential health service and technology without financial barrier. It is useless to have free medical care while the care is difficult to reach or low quality. It should be ethical to have essential health service universally available or to impoverish people with medical bills. First, we need to ensure quality, comprehensive service nationwide. In early 1980s, in spite of serious economic crisis, the Thai government made a bold decision as part of the rural development policy to freeze the new capital investment in urban hospitals for five years and chip the resources to build rural health centers and district hospitals to cover all rural communes and districts. Massive training of rural health personnel with compulsory public services were also carried out. This slide shows the evidence that before 1982, the budget to urban health facilities was higher than those to the rural ones. But since 1983, the budget to rural become prominent, shown in the red line. The results are well equipped and manned modern rural health centers and rural district hospitals. The government also provides housing, subsidized utilities and food, as well as good, com good communication facilities and strong financial incentives for the rural health personnel. For more complex service, patients can be referred to secondary and tertiary hospitals with specialized personnel, highly diagnostic and treatment technology. Level of system was set up in every region covering about three to five million people per region. This slide shows more and more people use the rural health facilities. The structure of the outpatient visit changed from a reverse triangle in 1977, shown in the blue color one. Changed to upright triangle with with broader base, shown in other colors. Then in 2010, 54% of OP services were provided by rural health centers and 33% by district hospitals, about 12% by provincial hospitals. We may say that access to quality, comprehensive essential health service are universal in Thailand. This shows some effect on poverty reduction. If there is no UC, and if we have UC now, this figure is the evidence that between 2004 and 2009, an additional 290,000 households were protected from medical bills induced poverty. As a result, this is a major achievement of NDG1 on poverty reduction. The second issue, the benefit package of UC scheme covers 800 items of essential drugs and all cost-effective, affordable interventions. The current package is comprehensive, ranging from the low-cost care, such as outpatient service, to high-cost care, such as chemotherapy, dialysis, open-heart surgery, antiretroviral drugs. It also includes health promotion, vaccination, community health development activities. The benefit package is continually developed by the benefit package subcommittee with involved on stakeholders and based on evidence on cost effectiveness analysis and budget impact in a transparent manner. We established a health intervention and technology assessment program 
to ensure good and strong sustainable capability. Those life-saving but non-cost-effective measures with high tendency for impoverishment are also considered. For example, renal replacement therapy, bone marrow transplantation for children. We use mixed payment mechanism. In general, we use capitation payment for our patient. Use the RGs with central limbers for inpatient. For some services, we would like to stimulate supply. We also pay fixed free schedule. The tight cost control measures stimulate the providers to move towards using quality generic medicines in more rational manner. In some cases, we also implemented the trip flexibility to ensure access to essential patented drugs. This figure shows the use of TRIPS flexibility or compulsory licensing to allow for low price, good quality, second line ARV duct has increased the access to lopinavir, litonavir by more than 30 folds from less than 500 per year to 15,000 per year. The third issue. The design of UC system based on participatory mechanism, for example, by law, the National Health Secretary Board consists of various stakeholders such as NGO, experts. Public hearing is one of the process by law which need to be done every year to adjust the design of the scheme. The board have to create reports on implementation, obstacles to implementation, or accounts and finance of the board in order to annually submit to the cabinet, the House of Representatives, and the Senate within six months from the last day of every fiscal year. Furthermore, our annual accounting report is audited by the Office of the Auditor General of Thailand. Finally, to monitor further responsiveness from people, we do a survey from both providers and people in satisfaction every year. The patient satisfaction, the blue line, is high from the beginning of the UC, but the provider satisfaction, the red line, was initially low due to increasing workload and inadequate budget. However, it was improved after higher budget allocation and higher financial incentives. The fraud issue, various strategic purchasing measures allow us to get the best possible service and also control quality and cost at the same time. Apart from the mixed payment methods, we also involve the private providers based on win-win situation. As the public health facilities in the elbow areas, especially in Bangkok, the capital city, are mainly tertiary care, we involve private hospitals and networks of private clinics to provide primary care services. A few five-star private hospitals provide limited number of cardiac surgeries for our patients at our price. For example, $5,000 for coronary bypass graft. This allows more access, and at the same time, the private hospitals have more, ex have more cases to maintain the skill of their staff. For some high-cost medical device and drugs, we use participatory processes in central procurement with vendor-managed inventory system. It allows much reduced price and ensure central quality control. According to the Section 41 of the National Health Security Act, the board shall earmark an amount of money not exceeding 1% of money to be paid to healthcare units as preliminary assistance to reimburse beneficiaries who are subject to damage or injury caused by any service provided by the healthcare unit. The fault assistance or compensation helps reduce the cost status and allow better satisfaction in both patients and providers. 
the number of patients receive compensation increase every year. Some cases were submitted by the attending doctors for the benefit of their patients. The sixth issue, we provide 24 service of call center, 1330. Every year we have about 800,000 phone calls. Mostly people ask for the more information and more understanding about their right and benefit. This can make benefit and right intakes come true and make more access to quality. About half of complaints are not serious and can be compromised. But other serious complaints have to react under the law. According to the section 57 and the 59 of the Act, patients who have been violated their right to health care, they can submit a request to us. Such cases can be investigated and solved by the Health Service Standard and Quality Control Board. Eventually, we can solve more than 90% of cases within 30 days. May I summarize three lessons of Thailand? One, UHC is access to health service without financial barrier, not only financial protection. It is can be achieved at low level of income, and it is effective for poverty reduction. Two, fiscal spaces and innovative financing are possible with political leadership. Resources must be used cost effectively through health technology assessment and strategic purchasing. <laughs> Lastly, mechanisms to ensure sustainable financing and meeting the emerging challenges are needed and should be developed through evidence based on health system researchers. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>